So opening up PuTTY, I'm going to select my serial interface, which is COM1 on my laptop and set my speed to 9600 bits per second. For readability, I'm going to change the appearance to 12 and set it to bold. And I'm going to click open. So PuTTY is open. I'm going to turn on the router and let's see if we can view the output. As you can hear, the router has been turned on. You can see that the system is starting. I'm going to say no to check SDRAM. Now the router will self boot. You don't need to enter any options. As you can see, it's booting off a file on compact flash. It's a bin file or binary file. This is the operating system for the MSR. As you can see, the system application is starting. The router suddenly goes quiet. All these hexadecimal values are normal. This is not a crash dump. If you saw something like this on a Cisco router, you'd know that there's a problem. This is normal booting on an HP MSR. After a while, you'll see a message such as this stating that there's no startup configuration file. That's normal because we haven't got a saved file. As you can see now, user interface con0, in other words, the console is now available and I can press enter to get started. So hitting enter, you can see the default name of the router is H3C. You can also see that we've connected via the console. Now this is known as user view. Notice if I hit question mark, I can see a list of commands. The command set is very different on A series versus E series. So as an example, the show command is not a valid command on A series. Now backspace doesn't work by default in PuTTY. So if I hit backspace, nothing happens. The way to get this working is to right click on the PuTTY window, go to change settings, go to keyboard and select control H for the backspace key and click apply. Now when I hit backspace, it works. So remember that tip when using PuTTY. So once again, the view that we're currently in is known as user view or user context. There are no commands such as enable or conf t. User view is used for operations with regards to the flash file system. So as an example, I can list, rename and delete files. I can also save the configuration in user view. So as an example, if I type DRR, that shows me the files stored on compact flash. And as you can see here, this is the binary operating system of my router. In other words, this is the operating system that I'm currently using. To do any configuration on the router, I need to go to system view. Once again, tab, question mark, and other commands are available, just like there are on E-series or Cisco routers. Notice this is system view. Notice the square brackets. This view or context is required to go to sub views or contexts. To configure options such as the console, or the VTY lines, I need to firstly go to system view. However, notice here, if I type DRR, the command is not accepted. This, this command and certain other commands require that you're in user view or user context. Just be aware, if the router doesn't accept a command, you may need to quit to user view and then try the commands again in user view. So once again, I'm in user view. I use the command system view to go to system view or system context. Notice I can return to user view by using the keystroke control Z. So control Z takes me back to user view. I can use the up key to see previous commands. Once again, I'm back in system view. I can use the command display history or display history command to see commands that I've typed. So here's a history of commands that have been typed. 
Typing the command OSPF will take me to OSPF configuration. Notice I'm now in OSPF view or OSPF context. I can type quit to go back to system view and quit again to go back to user view. Once again, system view, OSPF. But now if I use control Z or control Z, I go back to user view. Now you may have noticed that there was no authentication or no passwords required to gain access to the device. So as an example, if I quit, notice I'm connected to the console. I hit enter. I can access user view, type system view, and I can access system view. No authentication or passwords were required. Now in the real world, you probably don't want to do that. You want to have some type of authentication to make sure that unauthorized users don't gain access to the device. In HPA series, there are four levels of privilege or four privilege levels. The first level is visitor or privilege level zero. This allows the person to use diagnostic tools such as ping or trace root or in A series, the command trace cert is used. It also allows the user to telnet. The user, however, cannot save the configuration of the router or switch. The second level is monitor or level one. This includes the display and debugging commands, which can be used for system maintenance or service fault diagnosis. So more commands are available. Display once again is the equivalent of show. So the user can display the status of interfaces. So once again, I could type display brief interface. And this is a confusing part on A series devices. On some devices, you type the command display brief interface. On other devices, you type the command display interface brief. So it's worth remembering those options. If the command display interface brief is not supported, Remember to use the command display brief interface. As an example, you can see here that the interfaces are down. This command splits the output into two parts. The first list of interfaces are layer three interfaces. In other words, interfaces that IP addresses can be configured on. The second portion are layer two interfaces where IP addresses cannot be configured. So once again, as mentioned previously, Gigabit 00 and Gigabit 01 could have an IP address configured directly on them, as in this example. But these Ethernet interfaces 202122 and 23, which are the ports on the switch module inserted in the router, are pure layer 2 interfaces. But at the moment we're talking about privilege levels, so notice the interfaces are all down apart from the null zero interface. So that kind of information is available to a user with monitor privilege. Debugging allows me to view in real time what's happening on the router or switch. So real time information would be displayed, which can help with troubleshooting. The third privilege level is system or privilege level two. This allows the user to use routing commands and commands for each network layer and is used to provide direct network service to the user. The manager level or privilege level three allows the user to execute any commands, including file system commands, such as deleting or upgrading the operating system, FTP, TFTP, and X modem can be used, as well as the configuration of users. X modem allows for the upgrading of an operating system on a router or switch via the console that would normally or typically be your last resort. If you can't copy the operating system using a card reader or use FTP or TFTP, your last resort for an upgrade would be X modem. Users need the right privilege level to execute commands. So once again, you might be typing a valid command, but may not have the right privilege to type that command. So if a command is not accepted on a router or switch, ensure that you have the right privilege level. The super command can be used to escalate privilege levels. 
So as an example, I could use the command here, super, to increase my privilege level. At the moment, the privilege level is three. So I have full rights to the system. But if I logged in with a user that only had privilege level one, as an example, the super command can be used to escalate privileges. This is very similar to escalating your privilege levels on a unique system by escalating your privileges to root.